Hey there! Welcome to the Smoky Mountain Homestead YouTube channel. This is going to be a what's growing on video. I'm Brian Taylor and today we're going to be showing you how we're protecting our fig trees here in the winter in zone 7a. There's more than one way to protect a fig tree and we're going to show you what we're doing to try to be as successful as possible to keep these guys alive so we can enjoy the fruit in the spring and fall of next year. So stick with us, watch the tips and let's get into it. These fruit trees have been in the ground for several years without dying. I do not know the entire history from these trees because they were on a house that was recently purchased. However, the previous owner has had some luck keeping them just in the ground and from what I understand has not had any protection whatsoever. I personally do not want to risk these trees not making it, especially since I transplanted them and have spent money on them. So I want to do all that I can to protect my investment. Fig trees can die down during the winter time. Like they could die all the way back and just the roots survive. So you want to make sure you keep that barrier, that insulating barrier alive. Fig trees will take hits at about 15 degrees. And one thing that I learned from my friend Chris Page, who is a, the admin of the Tennessee Fig Grower page on Facebook, I actually had a phone call with him, a very nice guy. He gave me some cuttings and I've given him some chafe fruit cuttings. Uh, one thing I learned from him was that fig trees can actually take our cold here in 7A. They actually take it really well, but what makes them fail is the cold and the wind because that chill factor, if you guys are familiar with it, it actually makes things a lot colder. You can go outside in 30 degrees with a jacket on and feel okay. But once that wind starts blowing, then you start feeling it even though it's the exact same temperature. I was on a roller coaster last night at Dollywood and the second that roller coaster goes and you're 50 miles an hour, you notice significant cold coming all through you and I imagine that's how my fig trees must feel when the temperatures go down and the wind starts blowing. So what we're going to try to do is create some barriers, maybe have some areas that are preventing them from getting the direct wind exposure and we're going to put some radiant heat barriers up to prevent it from dropping down even further in temperature. So hopefully you guys just uh, follow the follow the video. I'll give you as many tips as I can. All right. Uh, all right guys, so this is gonna be the first video we do with our tiger fig. It is going to be doing the traditional style that you've probably seen in other YouTube videos. We're gonna use a couple materials that are a little different because we couldn't find burlap. But other than that, it's gonna be pretty much the standard way of doing this. Uh, so just bear with us, we'll show you what we're doing. And instead of doing step by step, we're just gonna do it and I'm gonna do a voiceover at the end so that we can make the video go faster and you don't have to spend 20 minutes watching us wrap a tree. All right. Here we go. All right guys, so now we are going to wrap this tree. Riker's gonna bundle it up and I'm going to put this around it. This tree is really good because it's vertical so we can easily do it to this one, but like that tree over there, that's, that one's gonna be impossible. So we're just gonna show you how to do it with this one because it's a vertical tree. Bond Garden Tape, not a sponsor. All right, so for this step, we're using this barrier material. People use it on houses, it prevents uh, moisture from coming in um, but it does allow moisture to come out so if moisture does get built up it'll still release but this will help it so that it doesn't freeze so we're gonna wrap this tightly all right Jackson grab the bottom spread it and unfortunately 
just looking at it now, we got this sucker on backwards. So we'll tighten it up right now. Uh, hold it tight on the bottom, that's important. So this will not allow frost molecules, the, the liquid to land on the tree and freeze. So that's where we're at so far. All right, on to the next step. All right, so now we're putting a cage around it. So we wrapped it with just some cheap plastic chicken wire and filled it most of the way with leaves. Dry leaves are preferred, but since we have this water barrier, it should be okay. And they, they're gonna get wet anyway as they, as they go through the season. But hopefully with the air being able to pass through here, it'll keep them dry and it'll be a little bit easier. So this is uh, the first way we're doing it and we'll show you some of the other ways we're gonna do. We don't have enough material to do them all like this. And some of our fig trees are just way too big to try to do it like this on all of them, so. So the first one we did, you can see, I used quite a bit more material than I needed to. Um, you know, lessons learned. I've got it wrapped, I actually have it wrapped up to the top and then folded over and tied off to prevent uh, any moisture from getting in there but then when I came over to the second one as you guys can see I used much less netting I put my stakes a little bit closer and the same method on top over here this tree had a little more girth to it so we had to be a little more strategic when wrapping it so we had to use more of the Tyvek wrapping material um, but we still managed to keep the fencing and leaf mulch to the minimum this one, we were not able to get the top covered, so we simply used a bucket to prevent moisture from, from getting in. Another simple trick is we have this extra water trough. It's our little Chicago Hardy, which should probably be fine, but if I don't want to do anything with it, or if there's a really cold day, and I want to give it the best chance, no frost is getting to that. The thick insulation from this will keep it from getting too incredibly cold. So it's going to get cold tonight. I'm going to leave it on. The next two strategies, they're going to look very, very similar. And that's because they pretty much are the same thing. But what I'm doing is with my tractor here, I, I got a scoop of dirt from just an area of my property and I'm pouring it on top. And what dirt is going to do is it's going to act as an insulator. It's a lot harder to penetrate soil than it is just to penetrate through the air or tarp or leaves or anything else that you might put on top. It actually has to get through that top layer. And if I add another six inches to that, it's gonna make it really hard for my roots to die. And if the roots stay alive, then even if everything on the top part dies off, the roots will come back. And if they're healthy roots, you're gonna have figs that year anyway. So on top of that, I'm gonna then place a large 
a large dump load of leaves. So the leaves, same thing as with my other project, they're going to just help create another layer of insulation. And leaves have a composting effect. As they break down, they will generate heat as well. If the leaves do get rained on and freeze, yes, it can cause some damage, but I'm more shooting for the composting heat factor. If they do turn into ice, you know what, they'll at least block the wind and it'll be another penetrating layer that won't get to the ground in the roots and they'll be able to come back strong. So that's the strategy for this particular one and I'm going to actually use this strategy on almost all of my large trees that you see in the video. The next part though, I'm doing basically the same thing on this small tree except for I'm almost completely burying it. I know some people actually uproot them, turn them on their side and bury them and then every year they'll unbury them and tilt them up. I don't have the time or energy for that but I'm going to go ahead and almost completely bury them with two scoops of dirt, you didn't see one of them, and then a big load of leaves almost completely covering this tree. So we'll, hope, we'll hopefully see if this protects it as much. I have three other trees that are of this variety, so I'm kind of experimenting a little more with that. So the rest of the part, just enjoy me uh, doing this process on most of my large trees. All right guys, so one other tip. It's an ideal location. You guys can see the sun's beaming off of me right now. It's actually setting off to the west. Um, but it's ideal if you can plant your fruit trees, especially the ones that are more cold sensitive, really save this real estate to the places that are against your house. Especially if you have a portion in a colder climate that has exposure to the sun in the winter time. Pay attention to your surroundings in the winter time. If the sun is hitting a surface, that surface is going to get more radiated heat and it's going to get warmer faster and it's gonna stay warmer, which is what you want. If you do that, you will get probably a whole zone difference in climate. So if you're in 7A, you might be able to plant something that grows in 7B. If you're in 7B, you might be able to get 8A just depending on what you're willing to do. Obviously with all these zones, we're gonna have fluctuations and we gotta be careful and do some preparation, but just simply planting next to your home could possibly save you from having to do all this type of protection in the winter time. Hey, this one's super easy. We're just gonna get this and put it over it and then fill it with leaves. All right, so as I've been making this video, because this video has been, I've been working on it for a couple weeks, um, I acquired some of these black 
55 gallon drums for my work because I had a good idea about using them to uh, fill with water so that as the sun hit them, it would be a solar kind of oven to conduct some radiating heat onto the fig trees. The idea would be, well, it takes a little more to freeze water than it does air, so it would allow that radiant heat to help dissipate the heat on the really, really cold nights, as long as it doesn't completely freeze over and turn into an ice block. But with 55 gallons, that's gonna be a little harder to do. And this thing's gonna be cooking with the sun. But as I've been doing this, I actually watched a uh, video from the Millennial Gardener who is basically doing the exact same thing. So this is just one of my steps that I'm doing. And I'm gonna put it on every tree that I didn't wrap cage and put leaves in so we'll see how that works i'll probably do some updates during the winter just to see what the temperature difference is around this so we can see how well it works all right guys it's gotten really cold since i made the first part of this video we actually saw temperatures drop down to almost zero degrees it's kind of scary how cold and how quick it got so i'm happy we took a lot of these precautions i did do a thermal test with my with my heat gun just to see what the differences were in some of the areas and I'm happy to say that it does look like it's making a difference. Even if the difference is only, you know, five, 10 degrees with these thermal barrels, it was actually closer to a 20 degree difference. It was like 18 degrees. So that's huge. Especially if you're, you're talking, you're going into the zeros, the wind chill factor is going to feel a lot colder than that. So hopefully you guys liked this, subscribe to our channel, show us your support, and we'll keep bringing out good content like this to share with you. See you on the next video. Bye. everything around it. So hopefully that helped keep these things alive. We'll update you and hopefully, I'm saying hopefully a lot. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. Smoky Mountain, YouTube, Homestead. Ugh. Homestead. We'll catch you, we'll catch you at the end. Ugh, I did good until then.